Hi guys, I'm back and this time I have to present something of my own and it is something that's not quite new. It's a spawner modification, something like finite liquids or better than wool already provide, but I did it for multiplayer. As you can see, this is my SMP server and I installed the mod on this and I'm going to show you what it does. Basically all it does it's in a 9 by 9 by 6 high volume. It will over time convert oh no that's cobblestone. It will convert cobblestone and brickstone into their mossy uh, variants and the Brick will also, um, with a chance of 30%, become the cracked, cracked brick. Yes, and that's what I'm going to wait for. Okay, so I'm just going to put some of those down like this. So we'll have great chance of actually converting some of these blocks. Well, and now I'll just wait and see what it... Oh, here, right about here. It already converted the first brick into cracked brick. And here is mossy brick. And I'm sure we'll have some mossy cobble in a minute. I'll just wait and cut the video when it happens and here we are as you can see sometimes blocks will change and that's what I'm gonna use to build a little farm for that so I'm just gonna clear the space so I cleared the area again as I said it's nine block by nine block uh, wide, centered on the spawner, and it's six block high, and um, the spawner will convert one block below, one block it's on, and f four blocks above it. So if you want the maximum yield, you can use a whole volume of this size. So what I'm going to do is I'll be pushing blocks from one side along here and we'll collect the blocks over here. So I'll need one more rows of blocks to supply blocks. I will show you how to do this. The whole idea is I will be using a combination of pistons and deployers to put up um, a whole wall of raw materials, let me call them this. So I'll be using um, cobble and brick. I'll be pushing them up from let's say over here so that it'll fill the whole 9 by 6 area of this wall and they'll be slowly one by one pushed into this direction and I'll collect the hopefully converted items over here with some block breakers. Okay, 
I've cleared one more block in this direction. Now we'll be using a lot of block breakers to collect the blocks we'll be pushing from the other side. So let me just put those up. Of course we'll be um, I'll be skipping one small area because that's where the actually the actual mob spawner will be. So this block breaker over here I can save that. So now I've put up block breakers. Of course I'll have to make another row of spaces um, just to collect the items with tubes. So let me just clear this area. Okay, now I've cleared that too and now we'll just have to get some tubes. I already have yeah, three over here. I think I'll have to go upstairs, but first we'll just make ourselves some pistons. And we'll be needing a lot of them, so just 64 pistons. Now I'll just fetch myself some more tubes from up above. Here they are. So now that I got those, I will just connect all the block breakers into a collection chest somewhere over here. Let's just put down our tubes. Okay, as you can see, now I connected all the block breaker outputs to some tubes and I'll just put all the stuff into a collection chest. Let me just grab one. Let's put it there just for you never know. Okay, now. Oh. Okay, I just realized um, I made a small mistake because I actually need to power the block breakers occasionally and I don't have any way to power them at the moment. So let's just remove those tubes and replace them with redstone tubes. So how could I forget that? Okay, I got my tubes back. So let me just get some redstone and we'll be converting our regular pneumatic tubes into redstone tubes. Just add some redstone and you'll have redstone tubes. Let me just get those and well again I'll just connect all those with my tubes. Okay so now they're connected with redstone tubes and that's much better. Let me just put one more over here and now we can also power the block breakers without putting some wire in between. So that's great. Now we have to push our blocks from over here. So we are just gonna need some pistons to do this job and that's 
a good job for pistons because they are able to push blocks up to um, they can push up to 12 blocks at once and since we only have to push them nine blocks this will work with the regular pistons so I'll be building my pistons over here So now let's just remove the misplaced pistons over here, make a little hole over there, and add the missing piston right here, right there. I already mentioned that, but in case you didn't already know, you can also reorient pistons and other vanilla stuff with your red power screwdriver. That's a very nice feature. So now we have our pistons. So let's just power those with some red alloy wire. I'll have to reach them all so I will Okay, that's the last one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks high. So we just can fetch ourselves some wire. And again, I don't have enough. Oh, there is some more. So let's just connect those so and just for testing purposes let's use this timer okay it's a little laggy but it seems to work now we can push a whole lot of those stones over here and just harvest them with block breakers. Now we need to supply our blocks over here and for that purpose I'll be using some red power deployers over here. So we'll just put some deployers of course, I have no deployers with me. Let's see. Yeah, none here either, but I'll just fetch some. The basic idea is I'll be using a row of pistons to push deployed blocks up to this point. And then they'll be pushed in a block over here. Oh right, um, I can once again uh, skip this piston right there because um, we don't want to damage our spawner here. So we'll be using regular pistons again like this to push our blocks up here like this. So we'll need another line of red alloy wires. On those pistons right here. actually missed one line of pistons. That's not good. Let me just fix that. Yep, 
Here we go. Now for those deployers. Let me once again go up and fetch some. So let's just check if we have some deployers available. Please just let me have some over here. Okay, obviously not. So we'll just have to make our own. We'll need 10 9 deployers. So we'll be needing some more pistons. And for that we'll be needing uh, some more iron. I'm sure somewhere. Hmm. Okay. First we'll need more pistons like this. So we got nine pistons. Now nine pistons with nine chests, a little redstone, and we get ourselves our nine deployers. Now those I'll just put down. Um, well basically here. I'll just do it from the other side so I can reach it better. Oh, what the hell, just... So those just for placement purposes and them. I wanted to place a torch. Now let's just orient them correctly and now we should have the right setup for our auto farm machine thing whatever let's just check yes they seem to be oriented correctly now we need to power the deployers we need also to deliver our cobblestone or stone bricks into those deployers and then we need to push the block that's now on the piston up by one block and repeat the process six times so we'll have the whole area filled and then we'll be pushing blocks now in front of the pistons one block into this direction and repeat that for well, every, I don't know, every minute or so. And then we can harvest our hopefully converted blocks. I'll be adding a filter to the output and I'll simply recycle all the non converted blocks, and the finally converted blocks will just be in this chest. Like, like so. That's the idea. Let's see if we can get it to work. Okay, once again. So I'm finally almost done with the whole wiring and I'll show you how to do this, how I did this in a moment. So as you can see, next to the block breakers which will be powered by the redstone tubes over here 
I have set up this tube to collect the items and by using this filter to separate any items I do not desire. For example, I have um, pre-cracked stuff over here. So let me just set up the filter to, let's say I want to accept the cracked stones, the mossy stone and the mossy stone bricks like this. Since in this configuration the filter is closer than I would put the chest here and this chest, items in the filter will go through the filter. The filter will, will then just put them in that tube and put them in this chest over here. As you might have noticed already, uh, Minecraft 1.0 lets you stack chests directly above each other, so you still need a place beside, but you can now stack them uh, crazy close and tight above each other. So, um, in this chest over here, the final stone bricks with uh, moss cracks and mossy cobblestone will be delivered to this place. So. We could just close that up and be done with that side over here. So let me show you the wiring. Now remember, we'll, we'll need to put block onto the piston down there from one of the deployers, then push the block up, and then after six blocks, so when the full height of the room is filled with blocks, we'll want to um, push the blocks one block over there so the block breakers will collect those over here and we'll have space to put up another row to push over there. We'll not be uh, filling up the center row of blocks where the um, the actual mob spawner is located, so let me show you how I did the wiring. So over here I connected a lamp to the lever because I like doing those. Red for it's off and this setting it's just, well, on. Below here there is the timer which will pulse items from those chests into um, these lines of deployers. They are not filled yet. I have to get some stuff and do that. But that's the gist. It also enables this wire. So when it's powered, which means it is turned off, it will stop filling the deployers and it will stop this timer from, pul from pulsing. This timer is set to 30 seconds, so every 30 seconds I'll be building up a new wall and push, push the blocks over by one. So, um, this timer, so whenever every 30 seconds, it will reset this counter. So it starts counting from zero. This wire will not be powered and the the timer. Oh, I made a slight mistake here. Let me just fix that. I moved it all by one block, so that's uh, why it's not correctly set up. So now this way, the timer over here will pull six times, connecting to the deployers over here through this wire connected through jacketed wire to those tubes without any delay. This jacketed wire will connect the redstone signal with, but still separate the tubes so we can have those deployers for um, our stone bricks and those for our cobblestone but the signal will be transmitted and those will deploy our blocks on those pistons. Then shortly after, 
that's the, the line powering the deployers over here. The same line will go into this repeater for a short delay. So um, this one is a null cell. It's just a strange way to cross some wires. You could do this with um, bundled cables and colored wires, but I just didn't feel like it this time. So um, I'll be powering the pistons. And those will push the blocks up. So this happens six times, and then the counter will reach, have reached its, its maximum count, and will well, power this line, blocking the timer, so it won't uh, pulse anymore. And this will do the following. First off, we'll have this wire over here, going through this pulse former to power connected by this jacketed wire, those block breakers. So they will just harvest the blocks. After a short delay, so that's this line here. After a short delay, I'll pulse the pistons, enabling us to, uh, well, they will push the blocks into the direction of the breakers. And 30 seconds after, we'll just rotate the blocks by one. So let me just um, put all my junk in here and get some raw materials. Or maybe, yeah, let me get some chests and some raw materials. So for our materials, I'll just be going to our mega furnace. You might remember that one. We have a lot of stone over here. Well, maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's say uh, some more. Oh, well, this. Uh, uh, well, just let's say that's enough. So we can just easily craft us some stone bricks like that. Ah, one stack more. So we have a full stack over here. Now we have some stone bricks. And let's get some cobblestone for the rest. Oh, I should really turn on the cobble generator again. So we have ourselves some cobble and some stone bricks. Just let's fill it up here again and we'll have some for the next time. So let's head back. So um, which one was which? I think those were for cobble and those were for our stone bricks. Let's just turn it on and Okay, we are now emptying our chests. Okay, now it's covered, it's running, and as you can see, it's building up a wall like this and pushing it over. Always leaving this hole down there intact so our mob spawner won't be damaged. Let's just take a look over here. As you can see, we're collecting all the all the loot and transformed blocks will be going this way into this chest and regular blocks without conversion will be over here. So now let's just cover this up because now we are pretty much done. So we're so here we have it. It's more or less covered up. 
There is a tiny, let's call it control, control room over here. I can turn it on and off. And when it's operating, I can I'll still adjust the settings over here. And it will produce more or less automatically mossy cobblestone and mossy and cracked brickstone into this chest. All I have to do is to supply raw cobble and stone bricks to those chests over here. And I should be good. Remember, you can still do that uh, manually. So um, it's maybe not the best way. You could also just um, feed this tube going from over here back into the other chests because uh, well you will probably not need that over here so that's something i'm gonna do later probably so um but it's already working it's already working quite well and that's about it for now thanks for watching and See you soon.